Yo, what's going on, people? I'll tell you what's going on. We got some stuff to talk about. And talking about talking, I realize that I look like a floating head, and it's not the best lighting, although it probably is for you guys, so you don't have to look at me while we talk about it. But, it is what it is. What are we talking about? What is this reality check? Well, how many things have happened, like worldwide, or maybe not even worldwide per se, but in our world, right? The world we live in. And I'm speaking mostly, you know, American, you know, this country, you know, our own little bubble. How many things have happened since other things have happened to distract us from the things that have happened? And even fur furthermore, what is currently happening, and that is the key word. What is currently happening is, is what they want you to turn a blind eye to. They want to be able to pull the wool over the sheep's eyes, and they do a very, very good job of it. And it's really, really frightening and disturbing to me, honestly, that it works so well. And the reason it works so well is because apparently everybody in this country either doesn't have one or has shut off their brain. Chris Rock, Will Smith, the Dave Chappelle thing, Amber Heard, Johnny Depp, all this stuff. Everybody's so Elon Musk buying Twitter. Everybody's so wrapped around it. They get so caught up in it. No, oh, this is the new rage. This is the new thing. This is what we have to talk about and watch and listen to and be concerned about. It consumes you. It consumes them because they allow it. And they got their minds, what's left of them, at least wrapped up in all these little kerfuffles and conundrums that have absolutely nothing to do with them. And do not affect anything in their world, good, bad, or otherwise. But somehow everybody's got to take a stance. Everybody's got to become even further divided. And while we're all bickering amongst each other back and forth about frivolous bullshit and posting memes and cracking jokes and whatever, and it's all well and good. What are they doing? And by, by they, I mean the powers that should not be who are laughing to the bank with all our money and all of our rights. Inflation, you know, skyrocketing. It's ridiculous. And don't say, oh, well, you get Trump back for another 82 years and we'll be, shut up. Shut up. There, it, the fact that people put so much faith in one man, no matter who it is, no matter where they're from or what they're about, or what side of the political aisle they fall on. It's the same thing people do with the Elon Musk thing. Same thing people with, with anything. One man, even if he wanted to make the differences, cannot do it alone. And you rah-rah shish from the couch, it ain't helping. So I don't know who needs to hear this, and not that I'm some soothsayer or wisdom-filled, knowledgeable, old soul. But it's all a distraction. It is all dog and pony. It is all a facade. It's theater. And you fall for it. I'm on Twitter, which, at Terribly Tack, if you want to follow me on Twitter, every now and then I post some spicy stuff. I might even troll you. Who knows? It is Twitter, but I'm on Twitter from time to time. I try not to be, and I only have one to promote the Second Amendment and the channel and all that stuff, so, but either way, I'll be on there, and I've met some cool people. Shout out Forest Mommy, shout out Liberty Thought, also known as Liberty Batty now, I think it is, and a bunch of other cool people too, but all I see is people on Twitter talking about this, talking about that, whatever the newest, hottest subject is. And yeah, it's funny. I loved the Amber Heard poop memes, dude. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. But at the end of the day, 
it's all to distract your eyes and your minds and make your emotions numb from what's really going on, what they've done to you for the past several years, and it really all of your lives, because the government has been nothing but a tyrannical controlling force, you know, on one scale or another, depending on how constitutionally you like to live, you know, we could have the debate and the argument about, you know, this, that, and the third, but the fact of the matter is, is we're being taxed out of existence. Our money is not worth the paper it's printed on. Wars are fought behind computer screens by people that don't care about the outcome. It's all theater. And by giving into it, by buying a ticket and getting your your gallon of Coke and your bucket of popcorn, some junior mints, you always got to get junior mints. It's refreshing. By doing that, they're selling out the shows. Showtime in and showtime out, day in, day out, every single time. Because they've got all the viewers, everybody's tuning in. Everybody can't wait till the next episode, the sequel, whatever it may be. It's not real, people. It's not real. And that sounds crazy. That sounds crazy, right? Oh, you're freaking Alex Jones and the gay frogs and the whatever. Fine. Fine. It, I, sometimes I wish that like, I didn't see everything for what it was. And this is not me saying I'm right about everything and I know everything in the least bit whatsoever, but I know bullshit when I smell it. And uh, I think it was little, <clears throat> little Wheezy F Baby who said it best. I call it like I see it and my glass is on. So I, it's bullshit. It's a big heaping pile of stinky, stinky bullshit. Which speaking of bullshit, not bullshit, but shit in general, but not even shit, more like poop and guns, shooting the poop, shooting the poop podcast, mid-serious video, shameless self-promotion. We talk about a lot of this stuff over there, and if you're not subscribed, make sure you do so. Might be a link in the comments below or wherever, but just shooting the poop podcast, check it out. We're trying to grow the channel. Uh, every Wednesday, we release an episode, and we talk about all this stuff, and uh, we do live chats and stuff too, so you can join in on the conversation. And it's important that you do that. It's important that you join in on the conversation. Because that's the first the first step is being aware. You know, they call it red pilled or black pilled or whatever color pill you want to associate it with. Um But it's becoming aware. It's like Neo from The Matrix when he followed the white rabbit. You know, like that's that's what it's all about. You get to see things for what they really are. And a lot of people don't want to see things for what they really are because then that holds them accountable. They are there responsible for knowing better. And it's too easy. People are too lazy, have become too complacent, too comfortable, too weak, too afraid. And with fear, they can control and they do it every single time. Look what the fuck they did to the entire world, round or flat, over the scamdemic. Think about that. Still taking place. Those rights that you lost during such are still gone. And nobody even bats an eye at it. Nobody thinks twice. Everybody's just happy that it's mostly over. Same thing with 9-11. The Patriot Act. They're spying on you today. Because of the false flag they perpetrated on you then. It's all been a part of the plan. It always has been. Every step of the way. They're really good at playing the long game. Talk about it all the time. It's death by a thousand paper cuts. We've been bleeding out for a while. I don't know if there's enough supply of blood left to keep pumping us full of it. Before it's too late, I would like to think so. And with newer, you know, firearms owners and, uh, you know, the numbers are skyrocketed the past few years for a reason. Hopefully a lot of those people realize what that firearm means, 
what it allows them. It allows them to enact their God-given, constitutionally protected, and reaffirmed, but inherent by birth, rights to life and liberty. Without that firearm, there is no such thing as life or liberty, at least for you, the person without the firearm, who half these people are more than willing to just give that up, or at least incrementally so. Disgusting to me, every gun law is an infringement, and those who enforce gun laws are oath breakers, not oath keepers. But besides the point, and I digress and all that, the idea is that the world that we live in is damn near, they told, they, 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 there's so many aspects to it, it's predictive programming. It's Truman Show, people. You ever seen the Truman Show? That's what this is. They're up in the, in the tower, in the command tower, placing all the pawns, playing Stratego with our existence. They're watching, they're laughing, they're crying, they're, they're applauding. They're manufacturing what they want with our labor, with our lives. But at the end of the day, we're allowing them because we don't know any better. Truman figured it out. He caught on. He woke up. He saw it was all bullshit. It's all smoke and mirrors. They're distracting you from things. Every time in the movie he would try and he would he would he would start getting on to you, catching on. Oh, hey, this isn't right. This is, they would send somebody in to distract him, to get his mind off of it, to have him not think about it anymore. Everything is a distraction, people, and it sucks because oh, you're crazy. How could you live your life like that? I don't know, man. But I'd rather live my life aware and realistic. The glass is not half empty, nor is it half full. There's merely this amount of water in that glass. I'd rather be informed and know what's going on than ignor ignorantly and blissfully uninformed. But people don't care. People don't care. They go by their entire lives, and a lot of them a lot of them, it's always the stupid people that are the luckiest. I guess that's how nature allows them to survive throughout their lives. But it seems like they can get away not worrying about a thing, not caring, not looking both ways before they cross the street, and they never get hit. Us, we try and plan and prepare and be ready for anything, and we're always getting screwed over. I don't know. I don't know. It's funny how life works sometimes, but I'll tell you this. Orchestrated or not, the powers that should not be are the powers that should not be because they shouldn't. They are evil. They do not ever once have your best interests in mind or in their hearts. It's all bullshit. They are the biggest hypocrites you will ever see, ever hear. But then so are you. For following along with them. You're just replicas. You're clones. You're bots. You're NPCs. Although you are being played. The ones behind the joystick. Are ones you'll never. Ever hear their name. See their face. And never even realize their influence on you. Because you've accepted. Control. From someone else over your every being. And existence. In your life. You are on autopilot, and you are nothing more than a useful idiot. Or at least that is most of the people, it seems, in this country today and all over the world. PC culture killed America, killed society. Political correctness controls the speech, controls the thought. You begin to believe you're wrong for having the individual beliefs that you had to begin with, merely because society said so, and... Just because more people than you said you're wrong does not mean you are. Remember that. I don't know, man. Beans, bullets, band-aids. You better have them. You better have a lot of them. You better know how to use them, how to cook them, how to shoot them, how to hide them, how to hunt them, and everywhere in between. 
Take care of yourselves. Without taking care of yourself, you cannot take care of the people that you care about. Try and have the equipment for other people that you care about and are responsible, but encourage them to get that stuff for themselves and also invest time and energy and effort into learning how to use it and setting it up. I don't ever want to see anything bad happen to this country, to anybody, to this world, to whatever it is, whatever simulation level we're on, right? I don't ever once want that, but I understand that bad shit happens and evil does truly exist, and it seems like the most evil is always the ones on this planet, or rock, or whatever the hell we got going on, because it's almost, it's almost how could this be real? It almost makes more sense that this is a freaking simulation or we're all just having a bad dream because of the idiocracy that is allowed to take place blatantly within our own government, let alone across the world. And we, the people, have become so numb to it that we sit idly by and ingest it and take it for what it is and not speak out never not once to stop it. It's because... Everything's a distraction. Everything's a dog and pony show. Everything is a facade. Everything is theater. Everything is predictive programming. Everything is a false flag. Everything is a, is a, a, a predetermined outcome. And of course, not everything. But if it seems a little too convenient, which you wouldn't even realize if you're not using your brain to begin with and looking at things analytically, which again, that's why we're in the problem state that we are, because weak men breed hard times, hard times breed strong men, strong men breed easy times, and easy times come back to breeding weak men. There's a bunch of weak men. There's a bunch of psychotic women that think they're strong because they dyed their hair pink, and shaved it off down the middle and grow out their armpit, armpit hairs. There's just a bunch of deranged, mindless people. And then there's the normal halfway on the fence here or there, maybe still Karen-ish, politically correct-ish, whatever it is. But for the most part, not half bad people. And they just go with the flow. And then there's the, the silent majority, they say. The silent majority, I, I don't hear you know, I guess that's where they get the name, because if we do have a majority, there should be no fear of speaking out, and if there's no fear of speaking out, how come nobody's ever spoken, you know, literally or metaphorically speaking? I just, it's, it's not doom and gloom, and it's not, you know, the, the freaking, the spaghetti monster is coming, uh, He's already here, dude. Make sure you and yours are good for when it gets bad. You probably haven't seen the half of it. Food shortages. On purpose. Everybody looks at the memes and they laugh and they share it and it's whatever. And yeah, that's a good way to communicate quick and easy and get a message across. I love a good spicy meme just as much as the next guy. But when is it going to be more than a meme? Do we only care about it enough for that? And how are we fighting back by sharing that? It's, well, how effective is that really? No, we really got him with that one. This is our entire existence we're talking about, people. As a country as a world, as a society, as a community, as an individual, a neighborhood, a corporation, wh whatever it is. Existence as you once knew is no longer. You're either going to get used to it, or you're going to go against the grain. Going against the grain typically causes... A lot more difficulty, a lot more money to deal with that difficulty, a lot more time, energy, effort, 
inconvenience, to say the least. Buck the system, people. And fuck the system, people. You really got to think where you stand on your preparedness, not only with your gear and guns and ammo and food and all that, but more importantly, your skill set, your knowledge, your physical fitness, your health overall in general, but your spirit, man. Clock's ticking, man. Clock's ticking. They are being so brazen lately. They're coming for us all, the way it seems. They want complete and total control. Broad as day. And people are given into it. People are given up to it. They are handing it over. I ain't getting off the sticks, bitch. Think about it, people. Do something about it, people. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. It's all we got.